Good morning. It's Black Friday, and I am in a Walmart parking lot in Vero Beach, Florida. That is a hospital band. I spent 24 hours in a hospital. It was an awesome experience, challenging and beautiful. I am being attacked from the inside and from the outside. Attack comes from the friends and from the body of Christ, and attack comes from our own minds, and attacks comes from many places. But you know what? <laughs> there is a supreme God who has befriended us and the whole game is being befriended by God. Now, it's very possible and very easy to unfriend God while everybody thinks you're still a friend of God. So beware and be careful. Supernatural Visitor, here's the topic. The topic is Messiah, Messiah alone. Think of the vast ages of people. Now that I've gotten to almost 60 years, this li the lifespan seems so tiny, so flippin' small. Just so crazily small. And the most important thing is, number one, that there has been a true supernatural visitor from the spirit realm to the human race a supernatural visitor of the supreme order, a delightful, perfect being who asks all the right tough questions and who loves all the forgotten and ditched people and calls us all, every human, clueless and evil. If you guys, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. I mean, here I am in the Walmart parking lot. You know what they're dealing? They're dealing bicycles. I like bicycles. <laughs> I, I walked through there last night, and there's just there's just uh, crates and crates. You know, there's skids full of bicycles, and they're going out the door for 35 bucks a piece, and it's cool. I'm just walking through the people, praying and observing America, feeling totally beat up. My hospital experience last night was torturous. It was like being on a cross. It was rough. And it was long. And it was lonely. Praise God. But there was a string of people. Awesome people. At one point I was, and when I was getting checked in, <laughs> I was talking in the spirit. And this, uh, this woman spun around. She said, what did you say? <laughs> I said, I'm not sure if I can repeat that. And I'm like, it's just the Holy Spirit language. And she was like, I thought that's what I heard. She said, you don't usually hear that except for in church. And I was like, yeah, then that's a big problem. You know what? Where I'm at, we get together with the kids. We set the kitchen timer for 15 minutes once a day. You let people hear your Holy Spirit language. So it's not some big deal. You're not in a formal gathering. You're inviting back in the Pentecostal joy moment. And you just enjoy yourselves from time to time. I mean, you can make all the eloquent prayers you want. You can go and heal all the people that you want. But if you don't teach your kids how to edify themselves and get tuned up by some, you know, speaking in the Holy Ghost. I mean, even the Bible reading and memorizing can sometimes bind you down a little bit too much. you got to balance it. So anyhow, this is a short one. There has been a supernatural visitor that showed up to the human race. That is what the term... Messiah or Moshiach or Christ. Christ means charis, means poured on. 
there has been a supernatural visitor that has come to the human race. That's what that word means. The supernatural visitor that has been expected for all ages. Messiah or Christ is not just Jesus' last name. It is a title. He is the supernatural visitor. The only one with a kind of power that supersedes the power in this realm and in the power of the parallel spirit realm and in the afterlife. Period. The power of G Jesus of Nazareth. The dunamis power, which is the explosive power. The, the healing power, the agape power of Jesus of Nazareth is higher than any other power in the visible realm and the in the invisible realm. Period. So the concept of power itself is a benign concept. It is not an evil concept. And on the great and terrible day, Many things are going to be exposed. Some people's sins are obvious and ugly, but other people's sins are going to be found out and shown on the final day. And there are those who operate, declaring that they operate for Messiah, some of whom are lazy bullies. It is easy to take a power or a favorite too true doctrine, hold it up as a flag, run forward, and gather a bunch of people to run with you. That is a thing that's easy to do. It's not that difficult to do, especially if what you've got in your flag is some God power. That in the Dead Sea Scrolls is referred to as the seductress the most seducing thing in human reality is a focus on God omitting details, actually hiding details that can bring deadly results. Okay? So, the supernatural visitor, Moshiach, Christ, is one who is clearly baptized in suffering. The suffering of rejection by the people he goes to, the suffering of having to literally press on and challenge and criticize the good guys, the nice guys, the nice Mr. Pastor guys. That's who the Pharisees are. The Pharisees are not just a bunch of bitter, ugly, nasty people. And Yeshua says, look, the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, and you need to do the things that they tell you to do. But don't behave like they behave, because their hearts are prideful, greedy. They are lazy bullies. Okay? And recently, I have gotten down the trickle-down effect of some lazy bullies in the so-called Christian arena. And I'm tired of it, and I've got some things to say. But most importantly, there's a supernatural visitor who's right now present all around you. Don't get caught up in the bandwagons of lazy bullies, okay? Don't get caught up in the bandwagons of lazy bullies. Some have good doctrines, some have good powers. Rather... Follow Moshiach. And if you follow Moshiach, you also know that you're in the lineage of David, King David, who says, I will never stop the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. The morning sacrifice is the prayers for the whole world with mercy, everybody in authority. 
not a bunch of slandering. Oh, that rah, rah, if only this would happen, and rah, 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 you know, if if our if our laws were blah 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 blah, blah you know, our country should blah, blah, blah. no, deep deep joyful cheerful prayers for every single person alive on this earth. Not a bully game. Who we, who we need to punch out? Okay. Prayers for everybody, merciful prayers for everybody. And in the evening, a time of cleaning up so that when we rest, clusters of demons aren't around us. Why is it said, do not let the sun go down on your anger? Because that is an invitation for the dark side to mess with you when you're down, when you're sleeping. And... <laughs> If you think you're doing church and you don't read those two little lines in the Didache, which are parallel to the scriptures, when you come together, admit your faults and do not come to prayer with an evil conscience. And before you have communion, Confess your sins to one another so that your sacrifice is pure. Now, that's a sacrifice is pure is a weird kind of Christianity, religious kind of term thing. But it, it literally is referring to the mystical meal of eating the body of the food that came down from heaven, which is Jesus. And he's talking about himself as a mystical visitation of the highest order that's so bizarre and huge that we might as well consider his visit to be just food because he's not just a person, he's God. And our little pea brains cannot fully conceive of how we've been visited by this dude, okay? Our little pea brains are not capable of conceiving many things, but the Holy Spirit gives us revelation. And I'm telling you, I mean, people are just plain dishonest. They're not honest about their own afflicting spirits that haven't gone away, which is the most important thing to cheerfully confess to others. Well, I seem to be really weak in this area, guys, so if I get crazy in this area, please, you know, just have mercy on me and, and carry me through my muddy times. Um, you know, individual moments when the Holy Spirit has said to you, Hey, tie your shoelaces and go call your sister. And you chickened out and you didn't get contact your family member or you didn't take care of a, an important thing. You know, you lay that out. Hey, kids, today God asked me three times to go talk to that fellow that I work with about something that was uncomfortable that he did. And I chickened out. God asked me to be a parent. You know, male and female, elder and younger, an elder person, a person with greater experience, has a responsibility to be a watchman on the wall and to speak when bad stuff is going on. Dasi na kosho, osamatika. It's true. So I, as an elder, from time to time, I'm going to say to my kids, listen, you know, there's somebody at the workplace that has kind of been messing up, and Father's asked me to give him a gentle hand and say, hey, it's not the best way to do things. Regroup. Think, think it over. Go back to that guy. Ask, tell him you're sorry. You know, say it was wrong of me to handle that like that. Or it was wrong of me to speak like that. I don't need to talk to you like that. You're a good guy. So sometimes we got to confess the omissive sins even more importantly. The more knowledge and understanding we have, the more eldership and, and experience we have, the more responsible we are to confess our omissive sins. And a person who is an apostle or a sent one or a leader, they are supposed to be punctuated by letting people know their own downsides. They're supposed, their lives are supposed to be punctuated by constant warning about what humans get stuck in. And I'm sitting around watching people allow humans to get stuck in, you know, strengths, which is a downside. Jesus says, do not celebrate that the demons run away when you speak to them. Just get super humble on your knees and say, I am so thankful 
that God has clearly said, I can be his friend. So part of this is a discussion about energy. A certain person that I won't name had healed a woman. And she said, is this like Reiki? And he said, no, it's not like Reiki. It's not Reiki. And then another lady said, is this like energy? I was like, no, no, it's not energy. It's God. And that man missed his opportunity to bring good cheer and love into that situation. Because the term energy is true in both the dark side and in the side of absolute light and power. It's a benign term. Dunamis, agape, storgi. You know what storgi is? Family love. Family love. I heard a lady tell a story about a relative of hers who had gone to a lynching of a black man, a beating and a lynching, way back in the 1920s. And he said it was the most awful thing that he had ever been a part of in his entire life. It terrified him to the core. The storgi, the family love, is a power. And some Christians are missing family love because they're lazy bullies. Mashiach, Messiah, he sacrificed. The ones who followed him all were tortured and killed. All of them, except for little John, the friendly, kind teenager who was real tight with him. Little John died, as you would say, of old age. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> he died in his 90s in Ephesus. And I just want to say, heads up, you need to watch out. There are people around you, you, I'm speaking to you Christians now, there are people around you in the midst of all kinds of stuff, new agey movements and this stuff and that stuff and et cetera, et cetera. There are people all around you who use terms that you consider stinky and bad that may actually be entering heaven before you. You never know. <laughs> Look at Philip in Samaria very quickly. Okay? In Samaria, what was wrong with Philip? How come they didn't get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Why did the most important living characters come all the way up to Samaria to lay hands on the Samaritans? Because sometimes the people that have been endued with power need to be called on. Authoritative forces need to be called on. And they had to come in because there was a, a bully, bully, bully fight going on between the Samaritans and the Jews. Okay? The Samaritans and the Jews had been slandering each other for so long. Nip, 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 nip. Oh, those stupid... Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a Samaritan. That's a Samaritan. That's a Samaritan. That's a Samaritan. Oh, those Jew, 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 Jew. Okay? All right? You got to watch out how you label people. Because the very people that you're labeling as being ungodly may actually have practices going on in their lives serving others that are supreme and better than yours i don't care how many people you're healing so watch out be careful be very careful because remember picture this peter and james come all the way up from jerusalem that's like a 60 mile 40 to 60 mile walk to samaria and they actually have to come in and ask for forgiveness for all the generations of grandparents and, and little kids that were mocking the Samaritans. You guys aren't going to heaven, and Messiah's not coming to you. And rah, 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 da, 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 da. I mean, people grab truths that are true, and they hit others with them because they're bullies. And that sucks, okay? You understand? I don't like to hang out with lazy bullies. 
You know, they grab some fun thing that works and then sits in the midst of it, like watching a TV. You know, I mean, you can grab your favorite doctrine on baptism or on uh, the end times, you know, the millennium and the rapture. And you can run around with that doctrine and sit there as if you're watching a TV set, you know, eating chips and soda. And that's your thing. You just run it, run it, run it, run it, run it. And you don't look at any of the other aspects of the Christian arena that are clear in the scriptures. Not hard to read, not hard to figure out. It's a package, man. And it's not easy. And it's not a cakewalk. And God tends to hide things. God tends to hide things. It is the character of God to hide things away. And it is the character of noble people to actually find the missing things, bring them out, and give them to peoples for their benefit. Beware. Beware of being Christian spiritual bullies and dividing up into camps. Not only is it bad, but it actually creates a lineage of bad people who are missing a handful of essential points, not secondary points, but a handful of essential points because you're waving the flag of one one thing, one atmosphere. Dasara Kotosho. Those guys had to come from Jerusalem and say, generations and generations of children have been slandering you Samaritans from us Jew Jews. And we break that curse and we ask you to forgive us. Can we have a representative of you to say, I forgive you Jews for slandering us because we can't even pray we can't even pray until we go and reconcile with somebody that's got stuff against us. Now that's hidden in Acts chapter 8. You have to dig and understand that. That's serious. You put that together with Jesus saying, do not pray if you've got somebody with something against you. The reason why the Holy Spirit didn't fall is because there was a bitterness. There was a bitterness towards other people. There was a lazy bully activity going on. So watch out. Stay really humble. Stay in that mode of God have mercy on me, a sinner. And if you don't have cheerful celebrating confession and communion times in a closed setting with both genders and elder and younger, you're missing out and you're not really church. That's the hardest kind of church to do. It's easier to teach people how to raise the dead in the name of Jesus than it is to teach them how to tell on themselves.